first off, salary negotiating, it can be tough. A lot of people are trying to find a job, have been without a job for, for months now. So how can you get what you deserve? Don't do it. Here's the first rule of thumb. Don't do it without the tools you need to prepare to score the best possible salary package you can possibly have. Mary Abajay, founder of the Career Stone Group, is here now to help us all out with that. Mary, good to see you. Good to see you. And before we start, I know I'm a week late, but happy birthday, happy anniversary, whatever happy you anniversary. call it. Oh, that's your, right. Your long show. We're well, still waiting for the, the balloons and the confetti and all <laughs> that know, stuff. I have the cake, and then I just left it on my counter. Oh, is that right? My husband's eating We've it. We've heard now. that all week long. <laughs> we have, it still <laughs> I right. paid by drinking this weekend. It's a thought that counts, right? <laughs> exactly At least right. you enjoyed it. I did. How about a pay raise? Yeah. Oh, well, let's talk a about that. A bonus here. Uh, well, let's start it off here. Let's do it. I've heard that before you ask for the money, before you throw it on the table in an interview, or maybe it's your second or third interview, you yep. know that they want you, you're going to have to do this negotiating that everybody kind of, nobody likes to talk money, but do your homework, obviously. Absolutely. Yeah, what happens oftentimes before you, you know, first of all, let's be aware of when you ask, when you negotiate salary. You have to wait to the last possible second. You do not want to lead your interview off with the salary question. You don't want to end your first interview off. What you want to do is you have to be prepared to negotiate when they offer when they make you an offer and you have to do your homework okay. so first of all prepare to negotiate have in your mind that you are going to negotiate and do your homework couple of areas that you have to research the company you have to know how much money they have, right? Mm -hmm. You have to know how fiscally sound they, ha they are. You have to know what, where they're standing is the in, in the industry. And you have to know kind of what their pay, pay scales look like. You also have to uh, research your profession. If you are going to be applying to be an anchor for a local TV show, you have to know what other anchors are getting paid to do similar work. And then you also thoroughly have to be able to research your value. What value do you bring, Natasha? Not just the profession, but what do you bring to that job? Show yourself off. Show, Show yourself the positive. That's exactly right. Now, I've, I've heard it said that if you are, are in a salary negotiation and the prospective uh, employer asks you, how much money do you make right now? Oh, I hate that evade, question. Evade, evade, evade. <laughs> just, just say, I, I really choose not to answer that question. Yeah. Now, if they ask you how much your current salary is, you can give them a range. You can't lie about it. You don't want to ever say, if they say to you, Doug, how much are you making now? You you can't lie. But you're backed into a corner. You're backed I mean, into a you corner. Wanna be, you want to be very forthcoming with everything, but that's just personal. That gets their game. You know, for them to win the game over you. That's exactly right. So you want to be able to be evasive without lying. You never want to say you make $50,000 more than you do. Mm -hmm. What you want to be able to do is spin that conversation until you're ready to negotiate to being something like, I'm willing to take a reason, you know, any reasonable offer I'm willing to entertain. And that's you know, a good right. enough answer that's right there? For that, it Turn it back where you on are in the process. That now, sends the signal that you're not going to answer this question in right. the depth that they want to hear. Right. And so, you know, you or you could say, you know, I'm, I'm confident I'm within your range. But what you want to do is you really <laughs> want to push this conversation off until you know they want you. Do you think that Once, could put people off at all if they're no. trying to hire they, and you're throwing the game back Absolutely on not. Employers know that they have to negotiate. Okay. You know, and it also depends on the level of the job. But what you really want to do is you don't want to start salary negotiations before they want you. Once they psychologically have chosen you, they psychologically have chosen you, then you have some bargaining power. Mm -hmm. And when you bargain before you go in, you have to have three numbers in mind. You have to have your ideal number. Mm -hmm. That's the top number, the giddy up number, the number that says, oh, I'm so cool. All right. Then you have to have your, <laughs> your second number, which is the number like, you know, your satisfaction number. I'll take this. This is fair. Okay. And then you have to have your bottom number. That's your worst case scenario number. The number that if you, you know, you would be forced to take if you have to. And you never reveal your third number. Okay? That's only for you to know. You, you know, when you negotiate, you're going to be negotiating down and they're going to negotiate up. So mm -hmm. you always want to lead with a high number. You keep some cards close to you your vest. You have there. to keep that, that, because if you give that, that lowest number out, that's where, that's the starting point. When right. to know to actually talk about the money. Yeah. They need to bring it up first. It's always best. He who brings it up first. <laughs> you just walk in. By the way. A little bit of power. So you really want them to bring it up first as much as possible. You really want them to make you an offer first. Because then you, and then here's what's going to happen. So let's say we're in negotiation. I've already said, decided I want you, Doug. Okay. I'm like, okay, so we really would love you for this job. We think you're perfect. And you say, make me an offer. And, we, and I say, okay, well, what would you like? And you say, I'll entertain any reasonable offer. Offer, really push it and they say I'm gonna give you X amount of money my response to that would be I'm gonna go home and think about that exactly overnight. you know what you want to do in the moment is be silent repeat the number back X hmm 
Let me don't think let about them it. put you, you on the spot. Exactly. Take the time. And do exactly what Doug said. Go home and think about it. And and the prospective employer already knows or should know that that's a likely response and should accept Absolutely. that. Right? Look, 80% of, of recruiting managers and hiring managers expect to negotiate salaries and only 30% of candidates actually do this. So if you're not going in there preparing to negotiate, you are leaving money on the table and women are really bad at it. Women leave money on the table all the time because we don't ask. We don't ask and in many industries right now we're still a little bit underpaid than yeah. men so that's Absolutely. double. Because we're not negotiating. What are some that's, of the mistakes that, that you see that, that a lot of people think, no, this is the way, the way to do it? Uh, they bring it up too soon. Uh, they bring it up at the end of the first interview, like as they're leaving the first interview and the employer says, do you have any questions? And then they say, yes, what's the salary range? Uh, really big no-no. You don't want to bring it up too early. You should know the salary range because you've done your research. Gotcha. The other mistake people make a lot, and women do this a lot, is they say, here's why I need this money. I have a family to feed. I have, you know, grad school debts. You never, your employer doesn't care why you need the money. And that really weakens your position. It's right? not going to help. It's not going to help. It's only going to hurt. My credit card bills, it's bills are really high, It's going to hurt because they're going to think that you're financially <laughs> irresponsible and they're going to think that all you care about is the money. And quite frankly, employers don't care about that. They want to see enthusiasm exactly. about the job. They, yes. And they also want to know what pain of theirs you're going to relieve. So when you are negotiating, make sure when you're talking about your value, you really zero it in, in, in on what the pain is for them for not having someone in that Real job. Real quickly, yeah. how much uh, does having another job in the pocket, another job Huge. offer, help you out? Huge. It actually does. It, huge. I mean, being able to negotiate and leverage, I'm sorry, being able to leverage another job in your negotiation is really, really powerful. And you have to be prepared. Like, if you're going to say that to somebody, I have another offer, can you meet it or exceed it? Then you have to be prepared for them to say yes or no and to walk away. But it absolutely is the key leverage point. They know that maybe you're not as desperate, that this That's is exactly your be-all right. and you're, end all. That you're wanted, that you're a wanted quantity. And people like to back winners. So if they think someone else thinks you're a winner, then they're going to want you all the more. Gotcha. Mary Abjay. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. Good luck to everybody.